Hello everybody and welcome to a new video and this video is going to be about the current games I'm actually playing right now. I actually meant to get this video out last year but unfortunately you know I couldn't get it out uh, in a good timeline because I was going home for a vacation for a little bit but I am back now and very excited to bring this video to you guys. I think you guys will find a lot of interesting uh, titles in this from all kinds of different systems from the Genesis to the Game Boy Color and I'm talking about new games so let's take a look. All right, so we're going to start the list off with Worst in Death. Worst than Death is a 2D survival horror game where you play as a girl named Holly going back to our high school reunion. Um, one of the things, big things I like about this game is that you have the choice uh, with certain objects in the game, and they kind of play an effect later on in the game pretty much. So say, for instance, like if you have a drink in the bar, you get to choose what kind of drink you want, but um, that one of those drinks will have an effect on you later in the game. So that's pretty cool stuff. Um, but anyways, things kind of get off to a good start until like some crazy comes up to you and pretty much he's an old high school friend or enemy or whatnot and he's threatening you about a certain situation that we're still trying to unravel in the game so far so the reunion chapter in the game is pretty much the chapter where you kind of just like go to the gymnasium to the party uh, meet up with everybody and kind of like get to know the characters you're going to be involved with pretty much you know uh, you could tell there's something went down back in the past but um People are, some people are really friendly to you, some people are kind of shady to you, but not long after that, um, you start to explore the school and you already notice that something is going down and it gets pretty crazy from that point on. I would say that's pretty much halfway through chapter one and once you see what's going down, it's not pretty. Now, one of the best ways to play this game is actually with headphones in your ears because I was playing it on my Switch and I really enjoyed it like that so you could kind of really hear all the sound effects that are going on around you because it gets really creepy. I mean, you feel like something's behind you or all kind of noises going on. It's just this really a creepy environment and that's how a survival horror game should be. Now, I want to let everybody know that's watching this video that this is a true survival horror game, meaning uh, think of games like Clock Tower or whatnot where you can't really fight back. You can only like hide and run pretty much. And your run bar, um, even though Holly could run fairly, I think she could run pretty fast. You know, if you run around certain enemies um, and they, they're, they're pretty fast, so you have to make sure if you're going to run from something, make sure you're next to a door or a hiding place because they will get you in this game and Holly gets tired pretty fast. Now, I don't want everybody to think that's a bad thing that she does, like gets tired pretty fast. It's just that you just can't run from everything and just sprint your way out of a bad situation. You really got to think things through. So I like how the developer kind of made that, you know, like where you can't just run out of every situation all the time. I like how the developer spread out the chapters in this game. Each chapter feels vastly different from one another. Uh, as, as you saw in the beginning chapter, you're getting to meet people. You find out what's going on. And then second chapter, it's like like game on pretty much, you know. This chapter, you're in a factory and you're trying to hide from a killer. You're trying to get out of the factory, figure out what's going on. It just feels like uh, each chapter offers something new. So you'll never really get bored of this game. It's very exciting. Um, it doesn't get stale. It's always well, the game pretty much keeps you always on edge, pretty much, and that's what survival horror should do for you. For the best experience with this game, uh, at least my experience, you know, I, I was playing it on the Switch, and I had my headphones in the ear, so that was really nice hearing all the crazy sound effects and just kind of like just feeling, you know, just having that eerie feeling, pretty much, you know. I know a lot of survival horror games are not for everybody, but I think this is definitely one that people could get into. Um, it's easy to get into. Uh, the character Holly, she's likable uh, with her situation, even though she's kind of in a dire situation in the beginning. But, you know, I just feel like this game is like uh, something that can really be interesting for people to get into. Also, I want to give a shout out to Benjamin Rivers for creating such a cool game. Um, if you haven't seen his other projects, uh, definitely look up Home and also Alone With You. Also very good games. Um, and also, I know it's not easy being a game developer, man, but Ben, we appreciate everything you do. All right, Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Mayan. 
I've been playing this game for almost pretty much ever since it's been in development. John and Collector Vision would always bring this to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, and I would get to try out levels as they were developing the game. And uh, it just feels like it's kind of crazy, like the whole history of this game. You know, I can't believe it's finally out, and I'm really happy for John and the whole team. Um, I'm having a good time with the game so far. I'm possibly, well, I, I'm definitely going to do a review of it pretty soon. I just want to beat the game first before I do a review on it. And I'm actually kind of stuck. I'm halfway through the game and I got stuck on a certain part. It's still fun, but I just got to get back into it. And now finally about the game. It's a, I would consider it like an adventure game, but you can kind of like compare it to like Metroidvania type games. It has a lot of comparisons to like those old school games like Castlevania, uh, Metroid, uh, Mega Man, all that good stuff. And when I said the comparison to Mega Man, it has those dang Yoko blocks in it. I couldn't stand those things, but they're not that bad in this game, to be honest with you. But still, I just don't like them, man. They just bring back bad memories from, like, from Ice Man's level, Heat Man's level, all that good stuff. But anyways, going back into the game. But going back into the game, if you like any one of the previous titles I mentioned before, like Mega Man, Castlevania, and Metroid, uh, you will definitely like this game. This game is such a cool game. It's such a throwback to the old school, and I'm really enjoying it. One thing that really stand out for me in this game was actually the soundtrack. Uh, a lot of the music kind of pumps you up. So uh, for me, a game with good music, usually even if a game has faults in it or whatnot, if a game has good music in it, man, I'm, I'm along for the adventure pretty much. Next up, we have Tobu Tobu Girl Deluxe. Now, automatically looking at the cover of this game, I automatically thought about Balloon Fight and Balloon Kid. Um, this game doesn't play like those exactly. I'm still trying to figure things out with this game, which is pretty hilarious. So let me go off with a little bit of the story in the game. A girl walks around with her cat on a balloon. She accidentally lets go, and the cat flies away in the sky. So now you, you're on a rescue mission. And that's all there pretty much is to the story of part of the game. So next part is the levels here. As you see, you have to get the momentum to keep going up and you don't want to like fall off of your momentum pretty much. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of having a hard time with the game. It's really hard to explain, but it's actually pretty fun. I'm just, I just really suck at it. But I will keep practicing so I can get better at the game because I actually want to beat this game. It's always nice when you see an ancient system. What I would say, I want to say a legacy system like the Game Boy Color getting new games on it. And, you know, that's just, there's just there's something really awesome about that. You know, it just really brings a lot of joy to my eyes. If you want to pick up this game, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, it was made, well, published by uh, First Press Games. And uh, they got a lot of cool stuff on their website. So definitely check them out. All right, next up, we have Demolition Crew for the Switch. Um, this game, by looking at it, uh, some of you will remember uh, that old NES game. Uh, I think it was called uh, Wrecking Crew. Um, but this one plays a lot different, of course, uh, as you're trying to climb away to the top of a building before you prepare it for demolition. And you go through obstacles like trying to like avoid oil slicks, uh, enemies at, in some levels, things like that. It's actually a pretty fun game. It really, really should have been, like, I don't know if the developers are still making games for uh, any systems, but they probably should have put this on the NES if they could, you know, just as a kind of like a novelty for some folks because this is totally an 8-bit NES game. Also, the game is two players, uh, two player co op mode, that is. So I think you're, I'm not sure if you're kind of competing with each other, but um, yeah, I guess you're trying to race to the top. You know, I don't know how it plays because obviously I don't have a second player here. But just to let people know, it does have a second player mode or two player mode in it. And as you can see in this level, this is like one of the later levels in the game. Everything's changing up like ice in a building, which is kind of weird, but hey, it works. <laughs> And next up, we have Xeno Crisis for the Sega Genesis system. This game Xeno is freaking Crisis. amazing. As soon as I popped this game in, I was blown away. Seriously, guys, this game. Now, I'm not really a big fan of games like a Smash TV. You guys remember that from back in the day. Um, it was a fun game, but I never really got into it. Xeno Crisis, I got into right away. This game just is, is a lot of fun. And the game is pretty much like this, you know. A lot of these games, these top-down shooters, they give you like kind of like infinity ammo pretty much. Not Xeno Crisis. You have to really look at your am ammo that you're using against enemies because you'll run out. And then you'll have to get across enemies to try to get more. And you can take damage doing so. So you have to be very careful about your ammunition in this game. 
The game's presentation just kind of blew me away with how everything just kind of hit you with it. You know, it has voice acting in it, the music, the, the sound effects, it's, everything just feels so... It just has that real arcade feel to it, you know. I just, I love that type of feeling because, you know, back in the day, arcade games were serious business pretty much. Now, one thing I want to let you guys know is that this game will not hold your hand. I mean, this game is a serious business pretty much, so you got to get good pretty fast. But if you make a mistake in this game, I mean, it's not really, you'll notice that it's not the game's fault. You just weren't good enough. So I'm practicing right now trying to get better at the game because I barely, after playing it, haven't played it in a while, I didn't freaking, I couldn't get past the first level barely. So I'm still trying to practice and get further in the game. But the game, you get upgrades in the game from the dog tags and people you save in the game. So you, you're rewarded points pretty much and you could buy like upgrades uh, that'll help you out to make the game a lot easier. You know, it's pretty amazing to see what a company could do with a legacy console like the Sega Genesis. We're still getting new games on that, on that system, and the games are freaking amazing. Uh, Bitmap Bureau, man, they really outdid themselves with this. And I'm going to try to do my best to get the word out to you guys about this game. I mean, seriously, man, if you have not played this game, guys, it is freaking awesome. The game's available for the Switch, uh, PS4, uh, I think Xbox One as well. Uh, they're making a Dreamcast version. Um, and they're making a Neo Geo version as well, and I'm not sure if there's any other platformers on besides the Genesis uh, that you're seeing here. But anyways, guys, I will leave a link in the description uh, for, for like where you could possibly buy this game if you're interested in getting the Genesis, Dreamcast, or Neo Geo of physical copies of the game. Um, like I said, guys, I think everybody who plays this game will be will be blown away. And that's all I got for you in the video. I'm just gonna leave you with some gameplay, Radical Reggie, and I will see you later. Crisis. Zeno Crisis. Zeno Crisis.